afternoon everyone and good evening i hope you are all doing well we just want to thank god for the privilege that he has given us um thank you for uh, studying you know so we could also get started without taking much time um i want us to share the word of god and continue from where we left off uh last week we had started talking about the life of uh, joseph uh joseph we saw that uh, the last um, couple chapters of the book of Genesis actually is just focusing on this man and uh, you you know you wonder why is it that you know it's so important that in this book of beginnings uh, we are talking about um, many different lessons many doctrines but then almost a third of the book is focused on this one man we saw several things last time so that he was a person of integrity and we saw that integrity is the value that you place on yourself uh, we saw that there are people who will like you for no reason there are people who will not like you for no reason at all is not something that should make you uh, lose hope uh, we saw god being the one who loves us and there is nothing we can ever do to make him love us more than he has already done we also saw that the enemy will like to try and work and bring you down uh, because of the hatred and there's nothing you'll ever do to please him and you shouldn't even try to do so then we saw the dreams that god gives we saw how joseph uh, dreamt and when he dreamt he came and he told them the dream but the brothers interpreted the dream for him and uh, we saw how people who have uh, uh, inferiority complex will try to attach meaning on things which are not related they'll try to even uh, hatch plots and plants and we saw how we could pray by the grace of God that we have a balanced uh, way of our self-evaluation that we don't value ourselves so high or even value ourselves so long and this is where we are going to start today um, in verse 8 let us pray father we thank you for your goodness your mercy and your blessings we pray now god that you will teach us from your word we are your children we need the holy spirit to speak directly to us oh god convict and convince us comfort us where we need in jesus name amen the bible says that um in verse 9 then he dreamed still another dream now this is the problem of dreamers the dreamers will continue to dream this is the problem when god has given you a vision the vision will not allow you to rest some of you god has already given you a glimpse of what he wants you to do god declares to us that i know the plans that i have for you i know the thoughts that i think towards you I'm leading you somewhere. God does not have a bad plan for any one of us. Let that sink for you, my brother. Let that sink for you, my sister. There are many people, when they think about the future, it's already a foreboding future. The mind, by the way, the brain is um, naturally inclined towards the negative. You do not need to try so hard to look at the negative side of any situation. You don't have to try so hard. The mind is inclined naturally towards the negative. And just like anything that's natural, if you leave a field without um, doing anything on it, crops won't grow. It is the weeds that are going to grow, the thorns and the thistles. Sometimes, many times, uh, if you haven't trained yourself, to intentionally look at the positive aspect of situations our natural default is to see the negative and sometimes there's so many of us who take it to an extreme someone will come to you and greet you happily oh good morning it is so happy to see you in your mind you are thinking wait why <laughs> you know why uh, yeah, even I wondered. Why? Mm. The mind is naturally attuned to that. 
if someone comes and blesses you with something they give you maybe you, you know is it may not be a large sum of money they give you something then you're wondering what's the catch what is the catch you know we even used to have a column on um one of the dailies i don't know whether some of you might remember it and the column used to go something like when the deal is too good do what hello can you hear me <laughs> think twice think twice when the deal is too good think twice why so when we hear many times when you think about the future how the future will be like if you sit down with anyone here and you ask them uh, where do you see yourself five years from now ah, you know you know you are too nikijaribu kujaribu jaribu rarely do we have a positive approach to what's gonna happen but here i am to let you the good news let you know the good news god does not have a bad plan for you and if god's plan is supreme i want to assure you that the best years of your life are ahead of you amen the best is yet to come so the bible says he dreamed still another dream god was giving joseph a glimpse into the future i have greatness prepared for you i have wealth prepared for you i have influence prepared for you i have all these things prepared for you amen let me tell you friends th the fact that god is showing him what's to come does not mean that it will happen today you know god has already prepared a glorious and a wonderful future for you but right now he's preparing you for it let me say that again god has already prepared a wonderful and a glorious future for you the best is yet to come in the meantime right now He's preparing you for it. Thank you, Dr. Okabi, for saying amen. I was really hoping that all of us will say amen for that. You know, he's preparing you for it. The issue is not about what's to come. What's to come is good to give you a future and a hope. But what God is doing right now, he's preparing you. Yes, there will be some ups and downs. There will be some valleys to cross. There will be some disappointments along the way but he's preparing you because when the time comes and you get into and you step into what he has prepared for you he wants you to keep it he wants you to enjoy it he wants you to have life and have it more abundantly and that's why god gave this joseph yet another dream but here's the problem he went and told this to his brothers you see if God is preparing you, if God has already prepared a future for you, by the way, all of you who have dreamt of building real estate and God has given you that vision, it's coming. All of you who have dreamt of maybe uh, running for political office, it's coming. All of you who have dreamt of uh, opening up a business, there's a vision that God gave you, it's coming. It's actually coming. For those who are trusting God for a husband, for a wife, it's coming. The problem is when we share some of these things with people, they will mess your preparation. And so whatever could have been prepared for you within a year or two because of interference from other corners takes a while might even take 10 years and you become frustrated over time because it is the plan of Satan to frustrate you until you give up and therefore there are some things that God has revealed to you keep them to yourself in the name of Jesus why so your preparation period will not be messed up will not be interfered with there are people who will come they will discourage you what do you mean Especially when people come over here in the U.S. as immigrants. There's some people been here for 30, 40 years. 
the immigrants. Maybe they took some wrong corners and things haven't worked out. I actually was talking to a young man. You know, he came here around uh, five, seven years ago. And uh, his uncle uh, was the one who hosted him. And, uh, you know, he told his uncle, you know, I want to go to be an aeronautical engineer. And the uncle told him, what, what do you mean? What do you mean aeronautical engineering? Who has ever done that? We don't do that. No, 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 no. You cannot be that. That's not possible. Your parents are languishing. Your siblings are languishing. Tafuta kitu hapa ingia hapa ufanya kitu hapa mara moja one two one two one two. Hmm? Who was the time to? He discouraged him so much that the young man delayed going to school for two or three years. Now you need wisdom to know who to share with what God is is revealing to you. Joseph was a good man. He had integrity. But Joseph lacked wisdom. The experiences that Joseph went through were there to teach him wisdom. The Bible says he dreamed yet another dream. And he told it to his brothers. And he said, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the, to the earth before you? And his brothers, now listen, his father is also becoming a dream interpreter, right? And then the Bible says his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in his mind. And this is what happens, friend. Envy is what's killing us. I like the approach that Jacob did. Even though he rebuked his son, he stepped back a little bit. The Bible says he kept the matter in his mind. I'm quite sure you've seen the little uh, um, phrase that says, um, big minds discuss what? Come on, help me. Big minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss Come on, people. Events and small minds discuss people. Thank you. Big minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Aya, uliona. And then small minds discuss people. You know where your mind is. Based on your discussions, you know where your mind is. Jacob chose to keep quiet. And just kind of see how things are going to go on. Um, verse 12 says, This one time his brothers went to feed their father's flock. In Shechem. If there is a, a verse, if there is an event, and please follow me on this one. If there is an event, if there was a decisive moment in the life of Joseph, this is it right here. The decisive part was not when he became the, the prime minister. It was not, no, 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 no. This right here. When the father said to Joseph, your brothers are out there working and I need you to go and see whether they're fine and send and, and, and take this food for them. The response of Joseph was, here I am, daddy, I will go. Joseph had many reasons to give an excuse. He said, but daddy, they don't like me. But daddy, they always envy me. Daddy, they always make fun of me. Daddy this, daddy that, daddy that. He could have given an excuse. But this, if there was a time when Joseph stepped into the conveyor belt to the rest of his life, this was the decisive moment. And this is important, friends. Listen to me carefully. The fact that Joseph was willing to serve his enemies is what determined the rest of his future. Let that sink in. If Joseph does not go to see his brothers, Joseph does not get sold to Egypt, Joseph is not sold to Egypt, 
Joseph does not get to become the prime minister in Egypt. This was it. That he was willing to serve his enemies. Remember, your future is not in doubt. The glorious future is not in doubt. It's your preparation. God is preparing you. And some of that preparation will involve you serving your enemies. Loving your enemies. Humbling yourself to receive help from people who are despicable in your eyes. Oh God, I want to ask that you give me humility. And God says, I want to prepare you to be humble. So when you get to that elevated position, there will be a picture of Jesus. Everyone will see the picture of Jesus of humility in you. And what will he do? He'll take you through humbling experiences. God teach me to be loving. So and God says, I want to make you to be loving. So when you get to that place where I'm taking you, people see the picture of Jesus and you can be loving. And so what will he do? He will bring you some unlovable people into your life. People who will push <laughs> your love to the limit. The fact that Joseph was willing to go and serve his enemies is what allowed him to step into the rest of his future. God is preparing you right now. What is he asking you to do that is so difficult? Think about it with me. The Bible says that when he went there, he, um, you know, he found that they were gone. Verse 15 says, A certain man found him. There he was, wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What are you seeking? He said, I'm seeking my brothers. Tell me where they are feeding their flock. The man said, Well, they have departed from here. So I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. Dothan was 29 miles away. And Joseph would have said, Now, listen, I did my part. I did my part. I came they were not here i'm done how many times have we done just enough to check a box well i'm gonna serve my enemies the preacher said that serve your enemies you know you see he didn't pick the phone and me i did my part no god is preparing you god is not just wanting you to check a box Okay, me, I'll, I'll, I'll just do my part. To me, a message. To my message. Oh, you see? I'm in a blue tick. Eh? I'm in a blue tick, sour. I blocked the person. Me, I did my part. No. Hello? No. He went on the extra mile. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm, I'm just about to bring this to a close. He went the extra mile. It was not just just doing just enough friends god sees our hearts it is not your enemies who are preparing you it is not the circumstances that prepare it's god who's preparing you and he sees whether you're committed or not he knows the bible says that when they saw him coming of course they conspired to kill him let us kill the dreamer here he's coming but reuben the bible says reuben heard it verse 21 and he delivered him out of their hands, saying, You know, let us not kill him. Shed no blood, but cast him into the spit which is in the wilderness. Do not lay a hand on him. He was saying this so he could come later to deliver him and take him home to his father. Joseph did not know the brothers were conspiring to kill him. He was just coming with food. But let me tell you, even in situations like those god will always have a reuben in the midst of your enemies who are conspiring and planning on how they will bring you down god will always put a reuben in their midst and this reuben will be there he will turn their minds this reuben will be there he will see to it that the weapon that was formed will not bear rags reuben was placed there by god purposely to make sure that the the man who came and told 
uh, Joseph, uh, your brothers have gone to Dothan. There's another point that I forgot. Help you along in your journey. Strategic people like this man who was there in, uh, in Shechem telling him that they've gone to Dothan. Strategic people in strategic places like Reuben to ensure that the dream continues. The dream goes on. And therefore, friends, don't worry. When you see people sitting together to have a conversation, don't fear. Oh, they're talking about me. Oh, they're planning how they're going to bring me. To oh, no, 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 no. Kumbe, right there in their midst, a Reuben has been placed there. And you atapeleka maneno. And you atakuletea mambo. And you atakuambia. Have you ever sat down somewhere? You are going on with your day. And someone, even a random stranger, tells you, and you're I want to tell you, this is what I heard. This is what is being planned. This is what's happening. And God says, since I'm the one who gave you the plan, since I'm the one who has given you the dream, since I'm the one who's stepping into the future, relax. I will put people in strategic places to help you. How many of you have been held by people you didn't even know? People who did not have even a connection with you? People who didn't even know you? They say, Kijana, I'm a mama, auntie. Mimi ni meona tuni kusaidie, ufanye viet. And you're wondering, how, how, how? God putting strategic people in strategic places to help you. And God putting a Reuben to ensure that the weapon will not prosper. Friends, the story of Joseph is amazing. I started to see why God chose the Holy Spirit chose 13 chapters out of 50 to just talk on this man. This man will continue next week. Uh, we haven't even gone to, to Egypt yet. We'll continue next week and we'll see lessons of what God is planning for all of us uh, from this word of God. May the Lord bless us today and always in Jesus' name. Amen.